It's time to meet another patient in the emergency department. The staff may think they've seen it all, but they won't be expecting this. Accident and emergency. Here, lives are saved. Doctors battle with serious injuries, terrible accidents, life and death traumas. So what terrifying problem has 13-year-old Reese brought in with him? Well, basically, I was watching television last night with my nan. Go on. Um, and I was scratching my toenail and I picked it off. No way. You didn't. And I went to scratch my nose and the toenail went right off my nose. I'm sorry, what? He thinks he's got a toenail up his nose? Apparently. Reese was watching TV with his nan, chilling out, picking his toenails, as he did. I most certainly do not. When he pulled off a biggie, a right naily corker. But then his nose started itching. He wanted to scratch, and with that cheesy nail still on his finger, he went for it. Both nail and finger went up the hooter, but only his finger came out. And Reese reckons that bit of toenail is still stuck up there. Ouch. Just silly thing that's happened. But yeah, I'm going to get laughed at tomorrow at school. Well, don't be too hard on yourself. There's a first time for everything. I got my uh, fingernail stuck on my eye once. Right, so not the first time then. What is this, a hobby? So, top that. Enter Dr Colin Campbell. Let's hope he's up to the challenge. So tell me, Reese, what's brought you into hospital today? I was picking my toenail and I went to scratch my nose, not realising the nail was still on my finger and it went up my nose and oh, right. I sniffed it off. OK. Hmm, he looks as bemused as me. Don't get told that very often. Very embarrassing. Which side of your nose has it gone on? It's my left nostril. It's gone right off. First, Dr Colin tries to see if he can spot the chewed off nail. Must be a pretty sight up there. Hope you're enjoying the view. I can't see the nail now. OK. So what I want you to do, just block that right nostril and as hard as you can. I just want you to blow out of your left one. Now, this is the important bit. <laughs> when you breathe back in again, don't breathe back in through your nose. Breathe back in through your mouth. So we're going to do something like this, OK? Off you go, then. Keep going. Blow as hard as you can. We could be here a while. As you saw when we were sneezing, your nose and mouth are connected. It's a maze of passages and cavities linking your nostrils to each other and your ears to your nose and throat. That's why, when you're sick, sometimes a bit comes out of your nose. Gross. Meanwhile, back with Reese, there's still no sign of that nail. Blow as hard as you can. That's it. Keep going. I never thought I'd be doing this when I come to work this morning. Surely it must be out by now. Hmm, you'd have thought so. Oh, hang fire, we might have success. It's gone. Are you sure? It's made a runner. Yes, the nail has been nailed. But let's get another look up there, just to be sure. I can't see anything in his nose. Can you feel anything? No, I can't feel anything. You can't. Sometimes if you've scratched your nose, you know, on the inside, you can get a sensation that there feels like there's something actually inside your nose. You've not got that sensation now? No, no, it's gone. All right. Well, there you have it. As for the whereabouts of the missing toenail, nobody knows. I'm just happy that I can't feel it and it should be gone. The moral of the story is don't pick your toenails and don't put them up your nose. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier, Max had to take a trip to accident and emergency. Let's see if he's getting better. Back in Sheffield, four-year-old Max is being treated with antibiotics for cellulitis, an infection of the skin that causes redness and swelling. It all started a couple of days ago, when Max was watching his favourite monster film on TV. He was running about, joining in with the fun, when he tripped and cut his cheek on the table. Max's mum treated the wound at the time, and it looked like it was healing, but underneath an infection was spreading. So with a lot of swelling around his eye, we need to make sure that his eyesight isn't affected by the cellulitis infection. Over to eye specialist Dr Imran Hack to see what he can see. I need to have a look at your eye. Is that OK? Yeah. Yeah? 
The, the layers of the skin, if they become inflamed, that's basically what cellulitis is. In this case, we're worried if it's orbital cellulitis, that's when it involves the actual area where the eye is. Um, if that's involved, then it can sometimes not only damage the eye, but track back into the brain itself, and that can cause problems. So, Dr Imran makes sure Max's eye is moving normally, and then he gets out a nifty bit of headgear. This lets him look right into the back of Max's eyeball and it'll show if the infection has spread from Max's face into his eye. I spy with my big eye. With this, what I wanted to do was really look at the back of the eye and see if there's any pressure on the optic nerve. That's a little nerve that leaves the back of the eye to go to the brain. In his case, the infection hasn't spread that far and it's only limited to the skin itself and not involving the eye. So I think Max will be absolutely fine as long as he gets antibiotics. He'll probably be home in the next couple of days. With his eye given the all clear, now Max just has to wait for the antibiotics to tackle his skin infection and get the swelling down in his face. Day two, and it's time for an update. I'm getting better. That's good. Uh, his eye has gone down considerably, uh, but the inflammation is still inflamed underneath his eye. It's quite a difference from day one, although he's not ready to go home yet. Max has to stay in hospital for another night to get more antibiotics into his system. But the next day, there's good news. Yes, a lot better. It does look much less swollen now. Now that he's had antibiotics for two days, Max has improved dramatically. The cellulitis has been curtailed, and we're happy for him to go home. And by the looks of it, Max can't wait. Maybe that monster movie's on the telly again. Bye. Bye, Max. <laughs> Medical teams always expect the unexpected. Let's see how they fix our first patient. In accident and emergency, nine-year-old Courtney has come in with her mum, her dad and something else. I got a bit of a pencil stuck in my ear. You what? Did I hear that right? I was messing around with it and then put it in my ear. OK, I did. So what colour is it? It's a yellow pencil. Never mind the colours, aren't. Well, how did it get there? Courtney was in her bedroom with her colouring pens and pencils. One in particular caught her eye. It was the yellow one. Oh, is that her favourite colour, Chris? The green one looks nice. Or the blue one. No, Zan, something about the yellow one appealed to her. Anyway, she stared at it. It stared back, wondering if it would be chosen. Colour in with me, it thought. I'll be your sun. I'll be your sand. I'll be your rubber ducky. Why would she want to draw a rubber ducky? Uh, I couldn't think of anything else yellow. Just go with it. OK. That might fit in my ear, Courtney thought. Oh, dear. I see where this is going. So did she. Ouch! That crayon must be hiding. Can you see it, Dad? Here's Dr Julian Warren to investigate. What colour's the crayon? Not you as well, Doc. Yellow. Was that your favourite colour? No. No? OK. Tell us, what is your favourite colour, Courtney? Red. Red, right. Glad we got that sorted. Should we have a little look and see if we can get it out? First, Dr Warren needs to check exactly where the missing crayon's hiding. Yeah. And we can see that quite clearly. Thank goodness he's found it. So where exactly is it? Your ears are divided into three parts. The inner, middle and outer ear connected by the ear canal. The ear canal is roughly 2.5 centimetres long and that's where Courtney's yellow crayon is stuck. If it's left in there, it could cause damage or infection. Let's see if we can get that out, shall we? What's the plan then, Doc? We'll take her through to the procedure room. We'll try and see if we can get a little metal probe behind it and hook it out. But hopefully we'll get it out today. In the treatment room, Dr Warren goes crayon fishing with his special hook. But will he catch anything? It's just a case of trying to see if we can get past it. The crayon just won't budge, so Dr Warren has to go to plan B. Find out later what on earth he's going to do with all that liquid. Today, we're at a theme park to help solve your medical mysteries. If you're anxious about an ailment... ..or curious about a condition... ..then the Algemobile is the place for you. That is incredible. 
Chris is preparing the clinic ready for his first patient. And Zond is out in the park to answer your burning questions. At the clinic, Chris is open for business. Next patient, please. First in is 10-year-old Soraya with a question about some troublesome teeth. Soraya, why have you come to the Ultramobile today? Because I've got an interesting extra tooth in between my two front teeth. What's the diagnosis, Doc? This sounds like a case of I've got an interesting extra tooth between my two front teeth itis. Sounds right to me. Open wide. And there he is. Look at that. So, when you're born, all your grown-up teeth are already in your jaw. And when your milk teeth are falling out, it's because your grown-up teeth are pushing them through. And I think what's happened is that tooth is an old milk tooth. And as the two big grown-up teeth have come through, they've pushed that one back. Well, my um, extra tooth ever fall out? In some people, they do fall out, but probably you're going to need it taken out by a dentist. The good news is most of the time the dentist will put you to sleep, so you won't feel a thing, you just wake up and the tooth is gone. Away from the clinic, Zond is out and about in the park. Why does your um, tummy flip when you go up or down on a roller coaster? Inside you, not everything is firmly fixed down, so there are some bits of your body that are quite firmly attached and don't move much, but your stomach isn't one of them. It's quite elastic and it can move around. So what is literally happening is you're going up and your stomach's being pulled down, and then as you go over the hill, your stomach keeps going up and you start going down again. So your stomach is almost flipping. It can make you feel a bit sick. Dr Zand, how do antibiotics know which part of your body to affect? What's happening with every cell in your body is exposed to the antibiotics. But you can imagine the bacteria are quite different cells to the ones in your body. Like they, they, they just work in different ways, they've got different enzymes, different proteins and so on. And so the antibiotics are specially designed to interfere with the bacteria without interfering with the cells in your body. It's a very difficult question. <laughs> Back at the Alchmobile, there's a new case in the waiting room. Next patient, please. And it's eight-year-old Cassius, whose toes need some tending. So, Cassius, what brings you to the Ultramobile? On one of my feet, on all of my toes, on all of my nails, they're golden yellow. What's the diagnosis, Doc? So, this sounds like a rare case of, on one of my feet, on all of my toes, all of my nails are golden yellow itis. Easy for you to say. Goodness me, yeah. I can see under your nails is also infected. The fungus that has infected your nails is a bit like a mushroom. And if you ever go to a mushroom farm, they have to grow in dark, damp conditions, a bit like the conditions we find in your shoe. What can I do about it? Well, there are a couple of things you can do. You can take medication, get antifungal treatments that you paint on the nail. And the second thing you can do is wear quite loose fitting shoes that breathe easily. And sometimes on a sunny day like this, you should just wear flip flops. And don't forget to change your socks every day too. Job done for today, clinic closed.